Section 1.2, Angle Relations. Objective, to identify angle relations and to solve problems involving similar triangles. Let's start with vertical angles. Vertical angles are formed by two intersecting lines. The angles we're talking about are also non-adjacent. The first pair I'd like to discuss with you are angles N, M, P, and R, M, Q. These two angles are vertical. These two pair of lines also have another pair of vertical angles. Can you name them? In this situation, our other pair of vertical angles are angle QMN and angle RMP. Also, we can recall from geometry that vertical angles have the same measure or they are congruent. Knowing this, we can solve problems that involve vertical angles. Our first problem given to us for an example is they want us to find the measure of each angle. These two intersecting lines give us vertical angles, and they have vertical angles such as NMP and QMR. We do identify them as vertical angles. We know they are equal. We know they are congruent. Therefore, we can set up an equation that represents this. 12x minus 8 equals 10x minus 6. Then we just solve the simple equation. That's going to give us 2x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 1. Now, recall I said earlier that we just don't want to solve for the variable. What we want to do is actually solve for the measure of the angle. In this situation, what we need to do is substitute back into the expression. So 12x minus 8, substitute in. That gives us 12 minus 8, and the answer is 4. Again, it doesn't matter which expression you can use, because you will get the same value no matter which one you use, because the angles are equal. And just to show that, I'm going to do a quick uh, simplification of the other expression, and it does follow that they are equal. Let's continue with some more vocabulary. Uh, on the next page, what we're going to look at is a set of parallel lines represented in blue. And if we recall from geometry, parallel lines are lines that lie in the same plane and do not intersect. We also have another situation when the two parallel lines are intersected by a third line. When this occurs, that line is called a transversal. When a line Q intersects two parallel lines, Q is called a transversal. When this occurs, we are going to get sets of angles. Uh, we'll take a look at their definition in a second. Also recall that for a symbol, we have two uh, parallel lines that represent this by saying M is parallel to N. Angle relations formed by two parallel lines and a transversal. You can pause the video right now, take a look at the definition, and write down notes that you feel necessary. You should recognize this from being uh, the definitions, because these were covered uh, on a great amount in proving lines parallel, proving angle concurrency, and also relationships in geometry. Let's continue with some examples. Name the angles and find the measure of the angles. In this situation, uh, the diagram indicates that we are given two angles, and these angles are known as alternate exterior angles. From the previous page, we identify these angles to be congruent. Therefore, we'll just set the two expressions equal and then solve. 6x plus 4 equals 10x minus 80. And then solving the equation, we're going to get 4x is equal to 84. And then our value for x will be 21. Again, we just don't want to solve for the variable. We want to substitute in and actually find the value of the expression. So let's substitute in and actually find the, the angle measure. 10x minus 80. Let's substitute in 21. 10 times 21 minus 80. That's going to give us 210 degrees minus 80. Or our angle measure is 130 degrees. So each angle 
measures 130 degrees. If need be, we could find the measure of all the other angles by finding supplementary angles and vertical angles and all the other relationships that were associated from the previous page. If we recall from geometry, we we're given a very important theorem and it's stated on the screen right now. Remember the theorem is the triangle sum theorem and it states that the sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. If we continue, we have a, a sample of a problem that represents this. In this situation, they want to find the measure of the third angle. We already know that the angle's uh, sum is 180 degrees, so all we need to do is then find the measure uh, is to add the angles up, set it equal 180, and solve for the variable. And in this instance, uh, the variable is going to be our solution for the angle measure. And then we just simplify and solve. In this situation, our third angle measure is 63 degrees. As we continue, uh, let's just take a look at some basic terminology. Identifying triangles. In this situation, we're going to identify triangles by their angles. Uh, you've noticed this many times in the past. We're given three different types here. Acute triangle, all angles are acute. Right triangle, one right angle in the triangle. And obtuse triangle, one obtuse angle in the triangle. We can also identify triangles by their sides. In this situation, we have an equilateral triangle where all sides of the triangles are equal. An isosceles triangle, we are given the two sides of a triangle are equal. The third side is the base. And on the last triangle is scalene triangle where there are no congruent sides in the triangle. The two previous slides, uh, you can review back over them, but you've seen them in the past uh, from many grades, uh, especially in geometry. But if you have any questions based on this information, please refer to the discussion board. Let's look at the next topic, similarity. In this situation, two triangles are similar if they have the same shape but have different sizes. And for that to occur, we need to have certain conditions that hold true. The conditions for similar triangles are that corresponding angles must have the same measure. The diagram below has no measurement shown, but if I was to show an example, uh, I would put in 125 degrees for this one, 20 degrees, and 35 degrees. For these two triangles to be similar, the corresponding angles would have to have the same measure. So if this triangle, the small one, was similar to the larger one, then what I would do is make sure that the corresponding angles are congruent, being 125, 20 degrees, and 35 degrees. That's the first condition that needs to be met. The second, second condition for uh, similar triangles is corresponding sides must be proportional, or that is, the ratio, ratios must be equal. So again, if I set up the first triangle in a situation that the first side was 2 inches, and then 5 inches, and the third side would be 6 inches, then the corresponding triangle would have to have similar proportionality with corresponding sides. In other words, I could make this side 4 inches, 5 inches, and 12 inches. Then if I set up the ratios, 2 to 4, 5 to 10, excuse me, this should have been five, 10 inches, and 6 to 12. In this situation, when I simplify their ratios, they all turn out to be one half. So the sides are all in proportion. Now, I have the two conditions met, that all corresponding angles are congruent or the same measure, and all corresponding sides are the same proportion. In this situation, they would be a half. Therefore, my two triangles would have the same shape, different sizes, and they are similar. Let's take a look at a couple of examples dealing with similar triangles. In this situation, we have triangles ABC and DEF are similar, and they want us to find the measures of angles D and E. 
knowing from our previous definition that I have to have conditions being met, I know that my corresponding angles must be congruent. In this situation, I know that angle B is congruent to angle E. Therefore, since angle B is 33 degrees, therefore angle E is 33 degrees. Also, knowing that angle A is congruent to angle D, and since these are similar, since A is 35 degrees, D is 35 degrees. In the next example, triangles A, B, C, and D, E, F are similar. Find the lengths of the unknown sides in the triangle D, E, F. What we first need to do is to find a scale factor. A scale factor are, uh, is a ratio of two known corresponding sides. In this situation, I have one side that is 32, and it corresponds to the other triangle side, which is 16. Then I would simplify this ratio, which would be 2 to 1. Now, your scale factor in this situation I set up to be 32 to 16 or 2 to 1. Therefore, all my other ratios will be set up in this, fa this fashion, from the left diagram over top of the right diagram, or should I say the large triangle over the small triangle. Uh, once you start that scale factor, you must continue that way uh, for the rest of the problem. Well, let's find some side measures. On the right triangle or the small triangle, I have angle D, which is given to me at the top of the uh, figure. That corresponds to side FE, and to illustrate that, I put a small d to represent the, small, the, the side of side Fe. Uh, again, I have angle F, and to represent the side of DE, I represent the side of DE with a small case F, and that represents the side measure for DE. So let's take a look at how we get some, some actual measurements here. I use my scale factor, which is 2 over 1, and then using the same order, I'm going to find the measure of side D. In this situation, I'm going to have 48 over little d. And then all I do is I solve the ratio. Multiplying, I get 2D equals 48. Solving for D, I get D equal to 24. And I continue on to find the measure of side DE, which is represented by a lowercase f. So my scale factor is going to be 2 over 1, which will be equal to 64 over F. Solving the proportion, multiplying by uh, 2 times F is 2F equal to 64. Solving for F, and the side for DE is going to be 32. Another example of similar triangles. Uh, let's take a look at a lighthouse casts a shadow 64 meters long. At the same time, the shadow cast by a mailbox 3 feet high is 4 meters long. Find the height of the lighthouse. What we will assume here is that we are dealing with similar triangles, knowing that this is a right angle, we're given a right angle here. Therefore, we're going to assume that these two triangles are similar. Knowing that, we, we are given that the sides are going to be uh, and the same so what I need to do is to set up a scale factor. In this situation, my two known corresponding sides are 4 and 64. So my scale factor is going to be 4 and 64. Now what I'm going to do is simplify that to be 1 over 16. Then I set up my proportion to be 1 over 16, which is my scale factor, and then in the same order, I'm going to put in 3 over x. Simplifying, x is equal to 48, and in this situation, 48 meters. That concludes our samples, and the following assignment is given to you. Again, any discussions, uh, feel free to either email me or uh, check on the discussion board. Thanks.